What's poppin' dogs? Mr. Allen here. We're about to classify this quadrilateral A, B, C, D here on our X, Y coordinate plane. And we're gonna do so using the slopes of our sides rather than using our distance formula to find the lengths. I find it a little bit easier to work with those slopes as long as you know how to apply them, all right? So first thing I wanna do here is figure out the slopes of each one of these sides. Now I can do so using my slope formula, which is the, ch the change in y, y2 minus y1, over my change in x, which is x2 minus x1. Or, since it's already plotted on here, I can just go ahead and count this thing out. I personally like counting it out because I'm going to have it on graph paper regardless, right? So, rise over run is the name of the game. To get from A to B, I got to go up, it looks like 4, and I got to go to the right, I got to go 8. All right, so up 4, over Eight. And I can also see that with my numbers. From 1 to 5, I'm going up 4. From negative 5 to positive 3, which are my x values, I'm going to the right 8. Now, 4 over 8 simplifies down to 1 half. Cool. I'm going to do the same for BC. So for BC, I'm going down from 5 to negative 1. So I'm going down 6, so negative 6 over. And then I'm going to go from 3 to 6 here. I'm going over to the right 3. So I'm going to get negative 2. Lovely. All right. So negative six divided by three is negative two. Next one I got from C to D. All right. So I'm going, let's see, from negative one to negative five, I'm going down four. And then I'm going from six to negative two, that's to the left, eight. So negative and negative is going to give me a positive. So I've got four over eight equals one half. Now, another quick tip as far as deciding if the slopes are positive or negative, as I go to the right, what's it doing? For AB, it was going up, positive slope. For BC, as I went to the right, it was going down, right? For DC or CD, right, if I go to the right, I'm going up with this line right here, okay? So as I go to the right, what is it doing? Up is positive, down is negative. But you have to go from the right side. As we're moving to the right, then I can use that little trick, all right? So now from D to A. So this one I already know is going to be a negative slope, right? Because as I go to the right, this line is going down. Well, how much are we changing? We've got ourselves, let's see here, from negative 5 to 1, that's a change of 6. So I'm going to write this uh, right over here. Let's see here, 6 over, got a little bit of room. And then uh, from negative 2 to negative 5, that's a change of 3, right? So again, we are dealing with here, so it's a negative slope, we said, it'll be negative 2. One of these two it needs to be negative, right? It doesn't matter if it's the 6 or the 3, one of them is negative, whether I'm going... If I'm going up, then the 6 is positive, but to the left, the 3 is negative. If I'm going to the left and then up, you know, so I'm talking too much. All right. Negative 2. Beautiful. All right. I personally just like to look at the, as I go to the right, I'm going down. Negative. Woo. All right. So how do we interpret these slopes? Well, I've got these two are the same, right? 1 half and 1 half. These two are the same, one, negative 2 and negative 2. So my opposite sides are parallel here, and my opposite sides are parallel here. So my opposite sides, I'm going to circle this one, are parallel. What does that narrow it down to? Hmm. I have to be familiar with my quadrilateral properties. My parallelogram has opposite sides parallel. My rectangle has opposite sides parallel. The rhombus has opposite sides parallel. And the square has opposite sides parallel. My trapezoid only has one pair of opposite sides parallel. My kite does not have any opposite sides parallel. So we're looking at parallelogram. We've got ourselves uh, rhombus, right? Rhombus, raham. Uh, we've got ourselves a rectangle. And we have a square. All right. A little bit tough to read. That's okay. Parallelogram, rhombus, rectangle, and square is what we are narrowed down to. We've eliminated the possibility of this being a trapezoid, isosceles trapezoid, or kite right off the bat. Now we can still use these slopes here with the consecutive sides, right? That means the ones that are connected to each other. So this side here with that side there. Two, negative two and one half. Those are opposite reciprocals, right? Because if I threw this over one, when I flip it, it becomes one half, change the sign, it becomes positive. If they are opposite reciprocals, and the same goes for A, B, and B, C, B, C, and C, D, so on and so forth. If they are opposite reciprocals, they are perpendicular. So this means that I have four right angles in this bad boy here, right? Four right angles. It's beautiful. Well, what quadrilaterals have four right angles? That'd be my rectangle. Now I can write it all out. Rectangle and square. 
right? Those have four right angles. But now I need to differentiate between those two. I can't pick both. I got to either pick rectangle or square. Now, looking at this thing, I think right off the bat, we're thinking, hey, man, it's either going to be a uh, rectangle or a parallelogram. The sides look to be different lengths, but perhaps they're perpendicular. Maybe they're not. Well, we now know that it's either a rectangle or a square, okay? And I'm pretty sure we all agree that it's going to be a rectangle, but as is tradition in geometry, we got to prove it, bro. Prove it, right? You got to prove it to me. So how are we going to do that? Diagonals, okay? Okay. My diagonals here, I can get those slopes. Let me change some markers here. So my diagonals, boo, boo, okay. I can find those slopes. And if they are perpendicular, that is a property of a square. A square has perpendicular diagonals. If they are not perpendicular, then it falls into rectangle. So let's find our slopes of the diagonals. From A to C, so for A, C here, what's my slope going to be? Well, I'm going from, let's see here from one down to negative one. So I'm changing two. So my rise is down two. I know this is gonna be a negative slope because it's going down and to the right, right? As I go to the right, it's going down. So negative two, and then how far am I going over? I'm going from negative five to six. That's a difference of 11. So negative two over 11. That's my slope of that diagonal. How about uh, for BD? Okay, what's that slope gonna be? Well, I know this is gonna be positive, right? It's going up and to the right. So let's see here, from negative five to five, that's a change of 10. And then from negative two to three, that's a change of five, right? That's a change of five right there. Let's double check that. I like it. Beautiful, wonderful, okay. So this ends up equaling two. Well, are those two opposite reciprocals of each other? No. So the diagonals are not perpendicular. Therefore, my answer is a rectangle. Woo! Final answer. That's it. All right. So you could have gone through this with some distance formula, find some lengths. I think it's more intuitive of like, oh yeah, my opposite sides are congruent. Let me get the lengths, right? But distance formula is a little trickier to work with than slope formula. And, and we could just count this thing out with slope. You can't count distance diagonally, okay? So I prefer to go through it with the slopes. So if you see this kind of question, you know what's up. You know what's popping. All right, there we go. That's it. That's dope. Awesome. And America. See you dogs later.